Well, let's get to what the people are doing. Of course, the people speak, don't they? And Gemma Dale is the conduit from NAB Trade. Gemma, here in the studio, the people speak, right? They buy and sell. How's the activity been? Uh, they're not speaking at the moment. They're staying <laughs> really quiet. It's, it's quite fascinating, right? Because we looked at the overnight moves on Friday and thought there's going to be blood on the street on Monday morning. That tends to get our guys really excited. They're usually really prepped and they buy at the open. They know what they want and they're going to grab it when the market collapses. Didn't do much, to be honest. They were really, really quiet. Whether they were waiting for yesterday's news, I don't know. I think there's a real sense of reservation. People are only really coming out from their hiding places for something that's looking really interesting. Either it's popped and they want to sell it or it's down really hard and they want to buy it, but they're not trading at the margin at the moment with the exception of Fortescue. Obviously, we'll just leave that to one side. Um, <laughs> but they're sort of, they're very much waiting for something. That pullback is really what they're after, right? They've been waiting for that for a long time. So cash is still really high and a little bit of a sell off on Monday. Nothing as bad as we were expecting just was not enough to get them out. Ooh. ABB was one of the broker updates there, uh, Aussie Broadband. What's been going on in that space? Because that's, I uh, know, it was a very, very in vogue uh, you know, mm. uh, stock there for a long period of time. Mm. What have uh, what NAB Trade customers been up to? It has been a super popular retail stock in our base. Like, it's quite interesting. Yes, it's one that's frequently in the news. It's often talked mm. about as a sort of an exciting buy. Mm. I also think it's a great consumer brand in that people know it. They know that if they want great NBN, it's probably going to be your preferred option in your home. Plenty of us have been using a lot of home MBN in the last couple of years. And so that seemed like one that would be attractive, but we just didn't see it. We have seen some buying over the last couple of days, but it's not huge volumes. Mm. It's not enormous. It's just some. The one thing that we did see on Monday morning, though, where it was obviously people who prepped over the weekend was the ASX 200 ETF. Uh, it was a very specific one that tends to be the favorite with our guys. And they bought a ton of that. That was the only really strong buy. Aussie Broadband brought out a few. Fill your boots. Yeah. yeah. Well, what are they doing with tech? Because everyone's talking about bond yields through the roof. NASDAQ has two down days, one up day. What, what are you seeing on the platform with tech, Aussie tech? They kind of lost their love for it. It is the most obvious thing. Uh, Zero, they did buy, I want to say yesterday, you know, it got absolutely hammered on Monday. Mm. It's been hammered plenty of times lately. That was a buy, but again, not huge volumes. It's a few people picking it up. It's not thousands of people. It'll just be a few going, do you know what, this is probably a nice position to take right now. Uh, Square, they were selling, which was interesting. So a little pop there, they were getting rid of it. Uh, that one I find fascinating because a lot of people got out before the transition, um, before the effective buyout was it took place uh, and those who didn't have really been unsure about how to trade it we haven't seen any buying really and we've seen a bit of trimming here and there when it has a pop i had a chat with graham screw uh, uh, turner on mm. the program our flight center chief executive not too long ago talking about some positivity when it comes mm. to travel first time in a couple of years it's uh, it's been a long time yeah uh what's been going on in the travel space we saw that early in the week that uh, no Qantas announced uh, project sunrise nice up, up and haul. away yeah, yeah. Very, yeah very long haul very for long some haul. uh <laughs> what was it? we saw that uh, really helped to go to the travel sector was yeah. that uh, was that replicated what you saw yeah absolutely so you know the idea that there'll be a return to profitability next year with Qantas and the fact that they're back to a what, 105% of pre-COVID mm. capacity next month? Like, that's kind of amazing. Uh, a lot of our guys, as you know, were buying travel stocks during COVID. We didn't really see much except trading at the margin last year. But in 2023, Webjet, Flight Center, and Qantas were all in the top 10. Like, huge buying. There has been some trimming. That little pop was just an amazing opportunity for our guys to get out and go, do you know what, I'm going to bank this now. Mm -hmm. And so we saw a hell of a lot of selling over 90% for Qantas, near enough to 90% for Flight Centre, Webjet wasn't in there. I think most of those guys have got out. And also we read a lot of news yesterday, AGL, Mike Cannon-Brooks mm. can't help himself. How are the traders reacting to that news? Yeah, AGL is an interesting one. It's in the base. We don't see people buying it for obvious reasons. It's just been a long downhill run for five years or something. Uh, you know, so those who have held it have kind of ridden it down and not enjoyed that experience very much. Uh, the news and the little pop, they're trimming really hard. Right. They're really taking an opportunity to get out here. Uh, they may be hopeful that he can change the story or that the demerger will change the story, but most of them would just like to take some money and run at this point from what we're seeing in the trading. Mm. All right, so locally, not a lot of activity we're sitting on the hands for the time being, a bit of risk events, but over in the States, it's the middle of reporting season again. Mm. 
Uh, I saw the big tech titans uh, dominated last week. Still a lot of companies still to go. One of them that were in reported updates was Berkshire Hathaway. Now, a fan favorite for the value investors amongst us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, what, uh, what was uh, anything interest coming through from that trade? Yeah, so this one, you go, okay, Amazon gets absolutely smashed. Uh, Apple, things are still going well, but they're reporting all of the challenges from Shanghai production and so on. So, you know, there was big news in the US and Mm. plenty to trade. And you had plenty of opportunity to get on the stories early because they were all reported really widely. No interest, right? No one (laughs) went anywhere near any of it in any meaningful volume. It was no different to usual. Uh, Tesla was still top of the numbers because it always is. And that seems to have no obvious correlation to what's happening with the share price or the news. It's just consistently in there. But Berkshire Hathaway, Warren Buffett's name is back in the press. There's always a summary of his shareholder note going out for people where you can read it if Mm -hmm. you can get access. And suddenly it reminds everybody that maybe Berkshire Hathaway is something you would like to buy, but it's always the Class B shares. Oh, every okay. now and then we <laughs> yeah, see yeah, a Class A. <laughs> <laughs> every now and then you see a Class A and suddenly it's right We've at the top of the list. Pass the hat round for yeah, Class yeah. A. <laughs> <laughs> Spare half a million dollars to buy one share. No, it's no. always Class B. But uh, there's there's some interest now at the moment and I wonder whether this, you know, they were waiting for the value rotation, right? We've been waiting for 12 years for the value rotation. It's starting to happen. He's deep into gas and oil stocks at the moment. That makes a lot of sense to our guys, right? They buy them domestically. They like mm. what he's saying. And so, yeah, we saw quite a bit of buying in Class B. Let's round out, of course, we had the rate hike yesterday. Every bank has passed it on. ANZ dropped earlier today. The banks are norm- normally in the top. Mm. What are people doing right now with banks? Yeah, they're really mixed, actually, in the trading, which is quite interesting. NAB was off a little bit the other day, and we saw some buying, which was quite a surprise. Like, mm. NAB above $30 is a foreign concept for a lot of our holders, <laughs> and they haven't been buying at this price. Right? A lot of people have been trimming as it kind of crept above that big round number. Uh, Westpac has been the favourite for quite a while because there was a bit of a reversion to the mean concept. And yet we're seeing buying of Westpac as it comes back. They're very mixed in the banks at the moment. There's not an obvious trend. The volumes are somewhat lower than usual. They're just kind of be more opportunistic than a big theme. Very much so. It's not strong, this one. Oh, no, the, the force is not strong with this one. Someone had to sneak that in. Thank yeah. you so much. <laughs> On May the 4th there, Gemma Dale, as always, telling us what the real people are doing out there with their money. Thank you so much.